all right everybody what's up what is going on new video today a little bit different not really because it's still involving nfl but no madden no mlb week six spread picks been wanting to do this for a little while now also been wanting to do some mock draft stuff um maybe you know some other things within the nfl season or mlb postseason but postseason for mlb is almost over now so that's kind of like there's as well as some new madden series maybe a team coming back to st louis or san diego maybe maybe we will see but let's get straight into this week six spread picks let's do it um so last week i did tweet out at the on yt bears plus five and a half tonight okay um those early games were rough for us um latter half of the day though did really well but all of the 4 p.m games actually the 1 p.m whatever east coast coast whatever you're on for me it would be 1 p.m um games got all of those right outside of jets broncos which was kind of insane actually um that was kind of the one i felt the best about but you know the broncos that are not very good this year um, but let's get into this one where I had the entire time until the last four minutes of the game against Pittsburgh. Um, so that was a very interesting game. Obviously, Joey Porter Jr. with the interception late, TJ Watt with the forced fumble. It just did not go the Ravens' way in the second half, and it really hasn't all season, If and going back to last season as well, um, but I do think they'll pick up the win this week and cover. I do not think Titans with Tannehill as the starting quarterback is that good. Like, I have in here, when does Will Levis or Malik Willis make an appearance? Like, genuinely. You, get, you took Will Levis in the second, Malik Willis in the third. Malik looked pretty decent, actually, in preseason this year. A lot of improvement there, which is good. But then you look at Tannehill, two touchdowns to five interceptions this year. Like, you can do this Derrick Henry thing all you want, but that right now is not a recipe for winning uh, football games, especially with a team that doesn't have a lot of depth in a lot of places outside of your D-line. You have Traylon Burks on the offense with D-Hop, Chris Moore, whatever. But, man... Like, something's got to change for quarterback. I, I do not think Ryan Tannehill is that good. He's never going to win you a Super Bowl. He got you to the AFC Championship, and I feel like Mike Vrabel and that Tennessee front office, they're holding on to that. But right now, that just seems super unrealistic to ever happen again. So maybe get Will Levis in there if the Titans fall to, like, 2-5 and five or something. But at that point... Like, are you just tanking for another quarterback? You've drafted two the past two years. Like, there's an obvious plan to on Tannehill somewhat soon. When are you going to do it? I um, feel like that was way too much of a ramble just to say. Ravens, minus four and a half. They're going to bounce back. They're going to win big this week in Tennessee. Yeah, Lamar's going to have a big game. Trust. Commanders at Falcons and another one where it should be pretty close um I do think Bijan Robinson could have a monster monster game in this one um but for the Falcons it's really just going to be keep running the ball against this defense um surprisingly the that front seven has not been that good in stopping the run mainly because teams have been going outside like outside zone plays to get towards their corners 
Emmanuel Forbes, who cannot tackle, and teams are just continuously going out there, and it's working time after time. Um, because you're obviously not going to run up the middle with Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne sitting right there waiting for you. You're going to try to test the edge players. And so far it's worked. And now you got Bijan Robinson with a probably top five, top eight offensive line in the NFL in front of him going up against a bad run defense. I think Bijan could have a giant game. Um this is also Taylor Heineke revenge game. Obviously, he was with the Commanders the past couple years. Uh, he is now in Atlanta, backing up Desmond Ritter, who is dog shit. I do not care what you say. He is not good. And this team, the Atlanta Falcons team, is not going to go anywhere if he is the quarterback. It just is what it is. In the playoffs, if they get to the playoffs, which it's looking likely with how bad the NFC South is right now, It'll probably come down to the Falcons or the Saints. I know the Bucks are doing good, but I don't see that lasting, to be honest. It could. I mean, I love Baker Mayfield. I love Mike Evans and that offense, but I don't see them consistently beating teams. And the Falcons' defense is pretty good. I was a little bit suspect earlier in the year, but they have shown, you know, all right, maybe, maybe this is a squad on the defensive side of the ball. Um, but in the playoffs, quarterbacks have to make plays, and I don't think Desmond Ritter can do that. Heineke, I don't really think can either, but at least he will throw it up to guys like Kyle Pitts and Drake London. So, and like I have there, get Pitts and London the ball. These, if you want to see how good Desmond Ritter actually is, test this commander's secondary. You saw what they gave up against the Bears. I know that's DJ Moore, and he's a top 10, top 12 wide receiver in the league. But test this secondary. Outside of Kendall Fuller, they're a young secondary. Throw it to Drake London. Throw it to Kyle Pitts. No one can guard those guys on this defense. I'm almost certain of it. But anyways... I also want to see how Howell responds after a horrible week. Um, and as well as, does Emmanuel Forbes actually start? I think he might be coming off the bench this week, to be honest. Um, but I do have commanders winning this game. I think Sam Howell will have a little bit of a bounce back. Um, just don't throw it towards AJ Terrell, whatever you do. But game prediction... 24-17, Commanders, they cover the two-and-a-half point spread, and we'll go back home, winners. 49ers head to Cleveland in a top defensive showdown. If you want to see defense, like defense, defense, in modern-day NFL, you better watch this game. Because both these defenses fly around the field. Good secondaries. Fantastic. Elite defensive fronts. Niners definitely have the edge in the linebacker room. And overall, I think as a team, the Niners are just the best team by far. Um, but it's this one should be a fun one if you're a fan of the defensive side of the ball. And... That's why I have, do the 49ers score 30 points? It's been a thing. Purdy, every game he's started, they've had over 30 points or whatever. That dude, Kyle Brandt might be right. Bought Purdy, 2023. Like, the kid is incredible. He makes every correct decision. It is kind of annoying to watch when he's going up against your team. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, I do have 49ers covering. I don't know if Deshaun Watson's going to play. So that's the real factor here. Last time we saw the Browns was week four against the Ravens. They lost like 24, 27 to three because they had DTR, a project rookie quarterback who, you know, inaccurate in college and it showed up in that game. If he starts, then actually, no, I think I saw it was going to be PJ Walker 
if Deshaun Watson doesn't play. But still, P.J. Walker has been wildly inconsistent, and there is no way I'm trusting P.J. Walker against that 49ers defense. No freaking way. Absolutely not. 49ers, 27-17, cover the five-point spread. Hammer it down. Saints, one-and-a-half-point favorites on the road at the 2-3 and three Texans. I disagree with that spread, first of all, because CJ Stroud has that offense cooking. I love what he's doing, and it's historic, obviously. Most attempts in the NFL without an INT to start a career and a season. It's been insane what he has done. Um... I do think Kamara is going to have a huge game. This is going to be like, yeah, Alvin Kamara is back, like, big time. Um, he had a good game against the Patriots the week before, um, and then the week prior to that, he had, like, 13 catches for, like, 33 yards or something absurd. Um, they just need to keep feeding him in the open field because outside of Olave, I don't trust anyone on that offense. I know they got Michael Thomas, whatever, slant boy, slant king, whatever you want to call him. I just don't know if I can trust him still. But I do think the Saints win this game. I think veteran experience will uh, kind of supersede this Texans team. Which is still so young, but like that's the good thing. This Texans team is probably one of the youngest teams in the NFL and they are just absolutely killing it right now. Um, another big thing is I do want to see Will Anderson against Ryan Ramschek, the Saints star right tackle. Um, I think that will be a really key indicator to how good this kid is, and I love Will Anderson. Came out of uh, Alabama last year, was the number three overall pick behind his teammate C.J. Stroud, and... I would like to see him go up against Ramchick. I think it'll be really fun. Um, and yeah, if you're Derek Carr in the Saints offense, you got to go after that Texans secondary. They, I know they got, uh, oh, who is it, from the Steelers a couple years ago. I always forget his name. Not Cam Sutton. Damn, I don't know. But they do have Petrie back there. Stingley's on IR, which sucks. Um, they don't have a lot of talent out there right now. The receivers and Kamara in the receiving game should be pretty big, and that's why I have the Saints covering the one-and-a-half point spread, and I think they win by a field goal. 23-20 Saints in that one. Panthers at Dolphins. Dolphins favored by 13-and-a-half. 13 and a half in the NFL. That's a college number, dude. But it's completely valid. The Dolphins have the best defense in NFL history. 2,568 yards through five weeks. Five. I don't even know if the Panthers' offense is going to hit that by week 10. Like, genuinely. Offense is incredible. Waddle, two. No, A-Chain just went on IR, but they Wilson probably coming back. You still... Mostert, you have Cedric Wilson, Bobby Anderson, or Chosen, I don't know. Um, so many weapons on the Tua just has to get the ball out. 41-21 Dolphins, the offense continues to roll, and they'll have over 3,000 yards by week six. Bet on it. Seattle Seahawks travel to the Cincinnati Bengals who are favorites by three points and I can't blame them the Bengals look like they are back Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase went crazy last week Jamar Chase had like 15 catches 184 yards and three touchdowns it was something to like genuinely I have not seen that dominant of a performance by a wide receiver and a little bit. It was kind of insane. Um, I do think Burrow and Chase will keep that thing going. Test the young secondary of the Seahawks. I don't think anyone on that defense 
can actually cover Jamar Chase. They're going to have to double him. Um, there's no way you can't make Joe Burrow throw to Trenton, uh, Trent Irvin? Irwin? I think it's Trent Irwin. Um, th- make him throw to Tyler Boyd, who Tyler Boyd might actually have a big game in, in this. Uh, I didn't put that in, but he'd be going up against the second-year corner, um, Michael Jackson or Kobe Bryant probably in the slot. So, I mean, they could also move Jamar Chase in there. You know, you can do a lot of different things with that offense. Jamar Chase can play anywhere you want him to, um, which is the nice thing about him. But Tyler Boyd, look out for him to have a big game. Like, veteran, crafty receiver, he could be a, you know, he's had big games in the past, and... Like, there's no reason he couldn't have one against this defense. Jamal Adams hopefully is back as well. He had a concussion on that Monday night game, which sucked. But they had a bye week, I think. Right? No. I think they have a bye week next week. I don't know. But... Kenneth Walker... Could have a big, big game in this one. Cincinnati is horrible at stopping the run. We saw it against the Cardinals last week. Um, So, run Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet into the ground this week. Because both of them could have, you know, close to 100 yards and a touchdown apiece. And a big part of that is Charles Cross should be back for this game. Hopefully he is stud left tackle out of Mississippi State. First round pick a couple years ago. And he's been so good for them. Hopefully Abe Lucas can come back as well. Go Cougs! Um, Obviously WSU, Washington State alum Abe Lucas. He was a stud. Stud in the NFL as well. Seahawks really need him back. Geno really needs him back, both Charles Cross and Lucas. Um, But I do think the Bengals' offense is just going to be too good. I think Bengals start getting it back on track. Get to 3-3 this week. They cover the spread as well. Bengals 31-24. Sorry, Seahawks. Colts at the Jags. Jags four-point favorites at home. And both these teams, 3-2, and two, actually. I don't think any of us saw this coming from the Colts with Anthony Richardson, rookie quarterback, first-year head coach thing, uh, Shane Steichen. I definitely didn't guess it. And now they probably have Jonathan Taylor coming back because he just signed an extension. Apparently, Jim Ursay is just a hypnotist, maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know how Jonathan Taylor really came back from that after seeing everything Ursay said. I know none of it was personally, like, towards Jonathan Taylor, but still, with the whole running back situation going on, it's a bit interesting now. But, no Anthony Richardson this week. Uh, He landed on the IR, actually, with a AC joint sprain in his throat shoulder, which sucks. I loved Anthony Richardson coming out. He was close to being my QB2 over CJ Stroud. Um, he was QB3 though he deserved to be QB3 and he's kind of proven why so far I know, he definitely has had he's shown the inconsistency the Rams game he was terribly inconsistent did bring that team back though to get into OT so that was awesome to watch but Minshew Mania go Cougs baby Minshew will start this week he He just has a very good feel uh, for this Steichen offense. He was in Philly with him last year, now in Indianapolis with him. This is a starting quarterback, all right? He he could be a starting quarterback in the NFL, no doubt about it. Um, So this ain't going to be just a pushover game for the Jags. They're not going against any other backup. But they do have Calvin Ridley. And Calvin Ridley torched the Colts in week one. Um, 
I have it right there. Eight catches, 101 yards, and a TD in week one. Just He almost had two TDs, actually, um, but was called out of bounds at like the five or something. Um, and I think he's going to be the X Factor again. Uh, him, I don't think Zay Jones will be back yet, but I think Ridley and Christian Kirk are just going to torch this secondary again. And Calvin Ridley, another big game inbound. I do have Jags cover the spread, 27-17. Jags win and advance to 4-2 and two at the top of the AFC South. Vikings at the Bears, and Bears are 2.5-point underdogs at home against the 1-4 Vikings. And as you can see right there, Vikings 0-4 in one-score games this year, 11-0 last year. I think everyone and their fucking grandmother or grandmothers knew that that shit wasn't going to continue. No Justin Jefferson this week. Uh, no Khalil Herbert for the Bears or Roshan Johnson, I believe, with concussion. Like, this game might be a 10 a.m. shit show. Like, it might be like 41 38 Vikings win. 34-27 Bears win. Like, I genuinely do not know. I do think the Vikings win this game just because they are a far more veteran team. But I could I could definitely see the Bears winning this game. Um, Justin Fields continuing and carrying that confidence along with DJ Moore. Keep DJ Moore involved. Please keep feeding him. Dude is a fucking animal. He is a dog, all right? Feed that man. Um, but I do think that confidence from the Thursday night against the Commanders could carry over for Fields, and I hope it does. I am a Fields enthusiast through and through. I loved him coming out. I thought he should have been the second quarterback taken, but here we are, 2023 is what it is. He doesn't have the best situation around him, but he does have DJ Moore, and he does have legs, so... Watch out for him. This could be a game where Field has 100-plus rushing yards because if Dante Foreman, who is a good back, is the starter this week, look for Fields to be the main rushing attack of the Bears. But I do have Vikings minus 2.5 covering the spread, 27-24, late field goal to win it, and probably a turnover from the Bears to seal it. Unfortunately, as much as I love Justin Fields. But yeah, Vikings go to 2-4, and four, Bears 1-5. and five. Patriots at the Raiders. And we all remember, I have it right there. Chandler Jones absolutely putting Mac Jones in the dirt where he belongs. This is probably a game the Patriots do somehow win. It is Belichick versus former coach it's just it seems every single time and now it's his former coach and his former QB in the same game I would not be surprised to see the Patriots win and that's what I have Patriots winning an absolute barn burner 16 to 10 Patriots cover plus three um I am worried though about JC Jackson versus Devontae Adams because JC Jackson ever since he left the Patriots has looked god awful and obviously Devonte adams is top three receiver considered like arguably top one but yeah i'm gonna bet the lone touchdown for the patriots is a defensive play maybe a strip sack or a pick six lions at the bucks bucks three point dogs in their house this Lions offense is legit man they are obviously they're top 10 in every single category as you can see on the stat line um just not enough yet from this bucks defense to think that they're gonna stop this lions offense and that's why i have the lions covering i've been winning 31 20 um also is amon Ra. St. Brown back, because that's a huge piece. Obviously, last week he had Josh Reynolds step up. 
would still really like to see Jamison Williams, maybe. I don't know. I think he's kind of fallen out of favor with his coaching staff, unfortunately. Hopefully he can, can get back in favor. Would love to see Mike Evans out there as well. I think he's such a huge part in what they do. And Baker Mayfield also loves throwing to this guy. So, Bucks are coming off a bye. So, they should be a little bit healthier. Um, you got to watch out for Aiden Hutchinson. Dude is a game wrecker, man. He is so damn good. <coughs> but I do think the Lions... Jared Goff, Sam Laporta, David Montgomery, all them boys are just too much on offense for that Bucks defense. Maybe I'm wrong, but I do have the Lions winning this one and advancing to 4-1. Lions, 31-20. Cardinals at the Rams. Rams, six-and-a-half point favorites in L.A. And you know what? The Cardinals play everyone's super tough obviously they beat the cowboys as their lone win which is hilarious <coughs> um so i do think this game will be close joshua Dobbs has been honestly awesome outside this last game um against the Bengals. damn my throat is killing me right now hold on Damn, sheesh, man. Got some agua. Take a little. <sighs> alright. That should be better. Anyways, Cardinals play people tough, alright? They are not just going to kind of lay over and tank for Caleb Williams, Drake May, whoever it is. They're going to play you, and they're going to play you hard. They're going to hit you in the mouth. There is no James Conner, I believe, this week. Um, I do like Dean Mercado, though. And they also have, um, it's not Tony Jones, is it? I don't know. But I do like the undrafted rookie, uh, De Mercado. He runs hard, um, and he's a little bit elusive. Do I think it's enough for this Rams offense, though, to keep up with them? I don't. Plus, McVay is 10-1 and against Arizona in his career, which is absurd. Um... At least to my knowledge, that's that's what I found. So it could be higher, it could be a little lower, but at least in the last six or so years, McVeigh is ten and one against the Cardinals, which is insane. So I'm gonna bet with that. Uh, I think the Rams win this game, but I think the Cardinals cover with a late garbage time touchdown. Rams thirty one twenty seven, but Cardinals cover the spread. The undefeated Eagles are seven-point favorites at the New York Jets. And it's basically just the Jets have too many injuries. Um, the Eagles somehow remarkably stay perfectly healthy all year. But they also have an insane amount of depth on the D-line in the front seven. Um, obviously, you have Darius Slayton out there. Or Darius Slay. And James Bradbury in the secondary with Avante Maddox, who I think got injured, so I don't think he's playing in this game. But like I said, for the Jets, Elijah Vera Tucker is out with an Achilles injury. He's done for the season, so that's two Jets now who on both their wins have <coughs> torn their Achilles. Aaron Rodgers with the first one, week one, and now AVT in week five against the Broncos. Um that's also why I have the Eagles D-line is absolutely going to eat this game. Becton, I believe, as well got injured in the last game um, against the Broncos. I remember hit the trainers looking at him on the sideline, I believe. Um, so you might be without him. You're already without Dwayne Brown, I'm pretty sure. It's not looking good for Zach Wilson this week. Like, if Zach Wilson does bad... Do not put it on him because Hassan Reddick, Jalen Carter, Fletcher Cox, um, Nolan Smith, these guys are going to be hounding him all game long. It is going to be – it's not going to be good. The only hope they have is the Jets' defense can keep them in this game 
and I just think in the second half they're not going to be able to do so. I got Eagles covering 27-14 Philadelphia. Now for the Sunday night game, I am so sorry as a Giants fan that you guys have to watch this New York Giants team on primetime again, and this time we're going to be without most likely Daniel Jones. I don't know about Saquon. You're without Andrew Thomas. You're without Aziz Ojolari. You're without our rookie center, John Michael Schmitz. Um, <coughs> and then there's a couple more. I just, all I can say is I'm sorry. Um, you might have a Tyrod Taylor special, which could be fun to watch. Um, obviously, Dable, Shane, both came from Buffalo. It's so kind of revenge game, quote-unquote, because this is going to be what I think is probably a, a beatdown from Buffalo. Um, I have it there. Giants offense is horrible, mainly due to the offensive line struggles. Um, I really I need Andrew Thomas back, man. This is... Not fun to watch. Bills are 14-point favorites. Just like I said with the Miami Dolphins spread at 13 and a half. Absurd. College numbers, man. This Giants team sucks right now. And I hate saying it. There's been flashes the second half of that Cardinals game. Whatever. Oh, yeah, we might not have Darren Waller. Giants might not have Darren Waller. So that's awesome. Growing injury popped up Wednesday during practice so that's fucking dope uh obviously the bills just lost to the jags in london so they have to now travel back to buffalo a little bit of jet lag but like you're already used to the time zone here so bills should be fine um that's about the only thing that can keep the giants in this game is some of these players still a little bit woozy and lagged out from uh going overseas last weekend um i do think the giants cover um do i fuck it i'm gonna say giants cover for the first time this season they are the only team to not cover a spread this season yeah how about that one um i think they cover with a garbage time touchdown 30-17, but it could be a lot uglier, and the, I kind of expect it to be. This is kind of just the homer in me. Um, Brian Dable, please get the ball to Hyatt and Slayton, please, for the love of God. Make Tyrod Taylor just throw it up to these guys because that's about our only hope. And for Monday Night Football, the Dallas Cowboys will go over to LA as two-point favorites, which I think is insane. Uh, three and two Cowboys coming off an amazing loss, 42 to 10. Beat down from the San Francisco 49ers against the two and two Chargers. Um, can Dallas bounce back? Dak. There's a lot of question marks, especially with this offense. Um, same with the defense, though. Oh, excuse me. Same with the defense, though. No Leighton Van Der Esch, most likely, for this game. I think he actually hit the IR, maybe? Um, so your captain run in the middle of that defense is not there this week, which could be huge for Herbert and the offense. Um, obviously, we saw the Niners' pass rush get... So he, the Niners' pass rush was in Dak Prescott's head all night long last week. Um, and Dak's just not good under pressure. He's not. He is not the playmaker of an elite quarterback. I've been saying this for years. Obviously, I haven't been saying it on YouTube for years. But anyone that knows me knows I've been saying it because the other people around me also have been saying it. He's not worth that contract. He's not. Um... I do think the Dallas defense will back, bounce back. The Chargers O-line is not great. They have good players on the O-line, but Micah Parsons, he gets, you know, funneled around in every single position out there. Dan Quinn will find a way to get him to sack, you know, Justin Herbert. But Micah Parsons is also just that good. He will get a sack. He will not be, you know, like last week where he was kind of put away for the most part. 
Um, hopefully, Joey Bosa's healthy. I know he was injured against the Raiders when the Chargers last played two weeks ago. Um, obviously, Khalil Mack had the six-sack game. The Mack attack is back, baby. That dude is so good. Um, but, yeah, really the only thing standing in the Chargers' way is Brandon Staley. It truly is. Um, so hopefully he stays out of the way. Um, I don't think C.D. Lamb as well will probably have a big game. Asante Samuel has been the only consistent corner uh, for the Chargers, and he's still been somewhat inconsistent. Hopefully Derwin James is still healthy. I don't even know anymore. The guy gets injured more than anyone, which sucks because he's so fun to watch. But if the Chargers want to win this game, which I do have them winning the game, uh, I think the pass rush will get after Dak, make him throw some bad balls, maybe get some interceptions. Uh, and I also just love the Chargers offense. Even without Mike Williams, Keenan Allen is so good. And he usually plays in the slot, so he'll be going up against a young uh, Deron Bland and maybe Jordan Lewis because Jordan Lewis got injured last game. I don't know if he came back. Probably not, but... Or is it, it might be Nation Wright that's actually in the slot, or Igbenogny. I don't know. Regardless, Keenan Allen is mainly in the slot. He will eat against those guys. Stephon Gilmore is not going to travel with him. Gilmore will be on probably Quentin Johnson or Josh Palmer most game. Um, so Keenan Allen will eat. If Austin Eckler's back, he will eat. But I do have Chargers winning. They will cover the spread, obviously, because they are dogs at home. Um, be on the lookout for a lot of Cowboys fans, though. There's a lot of Cowboys fans in Southern California, and they travel well over to California. So, Chargers 31-27 in prime time. Stephen A. Smith will have a field day the next day on first take. And, yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know. Um... I'm having a ton of fun doing this type thing. Uh, been wanting to do it for a while, honestly, and I've just started to do it this year, and we'll make this a weekly thing. But yeah, those are my spread picks for the week. Put in the comments yours or tweet at me at Rossi on YT, um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy and peace.